Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. If you happen to be watching the video version, you will notice that I am in my car. And that is because I just decided to try something new um, for two reasons. One, recording in my office was getting a little stale. And two, I have been struggling, like on the struggle bus, with finding good recording that is both good with both audio and video. Um, and so anyway, I do have my mic on. It sounds pretty decent, but you'll have to let me know what you think about it. (laughs) Uh, we might turn this into a podcast from your car. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But today we're talking about desensitizing noise phobias. And I, I, I considered doing this episode prior to July 4th, but I had a full lineup and, I decided that, first of all, if you're not part of the Patreon family, I do hope you join because you can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps me to continue to bring content like this to you because this is not a cheap thing to do. But more importantly, you get extra content, bonus content, behind the scenes, first look, notify, you get notified when all of my other videos go live, all of the things um, that normal social media algorithms won't always show you. (laughs) Um, So there's, there's a lot going on there. And again, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. And the reason that I'm bringing up Patreon right now is because I did post on Patreon about a week prior to July 4th, what my protocol is, what I was going to be doing with my dog specifically, knowing that fireworks were going to be an issue. Now, before we moved, so it's been a year, right? This month in July, 2022, it's been a year since we moved from San Diego to Central Texas. Now, we adopted our dog, Kim, in San Diego. We, uh, rescued her, rescued her. We adopted her from a rescue that pulled her out of Mexico. And while we had fireworks go off in San Diego, I don't remember them being super loud Um, in the neighborhood we were in. We could hear them, but they weren't horrible. And Kim never reacted. Like she had never reacted to fireworks. She had never reacted to thunderstorms. Um, the only thing about storm, like any sort of rain, she didn't like, she doesn't like water coming down on her. She doesn't mind running through, (laughs) um, a muddy field or, you know, a puddle that doesn't bother her, but rain coming down on her, she doesn't like. Um, but outside of that, she had never had shown any symptoms of noise phobias. Now, fast forward to um, New Year's Eve 2021, bringing us into 2022, my neighborhood, I was not expecting it. For some reason, I just had never equated fireworks with um, New Year's, (laughs) but uh, my neighborhood that we live in now definitely, definitely equates New Year's with fireworks. And... Uh, Kim had a really tough night and I was completely not expecting it. Uh, so I was a little unprepared. I had a good CBD oil on hand, um, but it was kind of late in the game when I gave it to her. Uh, I also used YouTube on my phone and found calming, relaxing music for dogs. And I turned that up, um, to a decent level, not like to where it hurt my ears or anything, but to a decent level to try to drown out some of the, the noise for her. But she had a really, really rough night because of that. I had a, I had a plan in place for 4th of July this year. And so what I'm going to do is first talk to you about what my plan was. Um, if again, if you are, are on Patreon, you got what, 
my plan was a week ahead of time, which I hope um, for all of you who are Patreon family that that helped you as well. Um, but then we're going to talk a little bit about desensitization specifically with noise phobias because right now is the time to start preparing for New Year's and next 4th of July because it can take some time. Um, depending on the dog, it can take some time to successfully desensitize any sort of noise that you need to desensitize for your dog. Uh, so first, let's talk a little bit about what, how I prepared for the 4th of July for Kim this year. First and foremost, I started CBD oil with her um, two days ahead of time. Now, CBD is not something that I typically use with my dog. Um, there are plenty of dogs out there who use it routinely for different ailments and issues. So your dog already has a good baseline in their system. But for Kim, it's not something we use routinely uh, or regularly. It's something I have on hand just in case. Um, and again, I use CBD Dog Health. Uh, not to say there aren't other good companies out there, I'm sure there are some, but CBD some, is something that is not well regulated. Um, it's not even well regulated for humans, so it's certainly not well regulated for um, animals. And on top of that, there are so many different kinds. Um, there are some that are full spectrum, there are some that are broad spectrum, there are some that are just the um, like hemp oil. So there's there's a lot out there and how they work for your pet is not necessarily how they're going to work for someone else's pet or if you have multiple pets in the house the same thing is not necessarily going to work the same way for all of your pets. So CBD Dog Health, again, is the one that I trust and recommend because it's the one that I have the most information on and the one that I have the most trust for. Um, Angela Ardolino is the uh, CBD guru behind that brand and I very much appreciate all of the information that she puts out. You can literally just type in cbddoghealth.com and there is a boatload of information on that website that she puts out. And even though it's called Dog Health, she has a line for cats as well. Now this, okay, okay I feel like I'm getting a little bit too much into CBD in this particular podcast. Um, I actually hope to have Angela on the podcast relatively soon so we can talk about it a little bit more. So I don't want to go too much more into detail about it, but that is the one that I have on hand and that I recommend. Um, now, in addition to, I started her on CBD two days prior, and I'm really glad that I did because people started setting off fireworks two days prior to July 4th in my neighborhood. Now, they weren't horrible until July 4th, like it was just a little bit here and there the two nights before, and with the CBD that I, I gave her half a dose each night, and she did fine. She acted like she didn't notice in, in, in even, like any of the fireworks. She didn't react to them at all. In fact, the night before on J July 3rd, we were outside doing our, um, I think second to last potty break and a firework went off while we were outside. And I did my very, very, very best not to react because a lot of times, this is another tip actually guys, is to remain as calm as possible and n try not to react because the more anxiety and stress you have, your dog is going to uh, react to your anxiety and stress, which is going to blow their anxiety and stress way out of proportion. Um, so I tried to remain as calm as possible. I didn't react to it other than like my eyes were focused on her and she didn't react. So I had really high hopes um, for July 4th. Now, in addition to that, I had uh, homeopath, the fireworks remedy, which is a homeopathic remedy that helps dogs and cats um, with noise phobia. I had that on hand, which actually, that is what I gave my cats um, for three nights, so July 2nd, July 3rd, and July 4th, for uh, two doses, I believe, two do two or three doses each night, depending, I think it was two doses on the 2nd, two doses on the 3rd, 
and then three doses throughout the night of the fourth. And I will tell you, my cats did awesome with that. Um, my one cat in particular, Sissy, who I just knew she was going to have issues because she is terrified of thunderstorms. She didn't react like with hardly at all with the fireworks. And I completely attribute that to the homeopath fireworks remedy. So I had that on hand. And then, um, on top of that, I had the relaxo pet easy Bluetooth speaker, which is pre-programmed. It's a wireless speaker that you just charge through a USB cable. Um, it's pre-programmed with relaxation tones for dogs and cats. So there's a switch on the bottom that you can switch it from dog to cat. And um, so I had that on hand and I did use it. In addition to that, I had, my dog loves her crate, but her crate is in my office. So I set up a second crate which was a soft-sided crate in the living room where my husband and I were so that she would have a place to go like a cave type dwelling <laughs> because dogs often like that and prefer that um, so I set that up for her which she did get in a couple of times um, on July 4th but it ultimately was not where she wanted to stay or be um, so I had that set up and then just in case I did have my veterinarian call in a prescription of doggy Xanax. I didn't want to be without it in case we needed it. Um, and here's what happened. July 2nd, July 3rd, like I said, I gave her half a dose each night of CBD and she killed it. She was a rock star. We had no issues whatsoever. July 4th, however, I gave her a full dose of CBD um, with her dinner and as I had done with the half doses the days before and um, I put oh I had one more thing I had her thunder shirt I put her thunder shirt on her and um, I had the easy pet or relaxo pet easy bluetooth speaker playing <sighs> she still it was just not as once it was about nine o'clock the fireworks started it just wasn't enough she was freaking out so about right like you're supposed to give the doggy Xanax, um, that's not the actual name of the drug, but it's basically what it is. Um, if you call your vet and say, I need doggy Xanax for fireworks, they're going to know what you're talking about. Um, I, you're supposed to give it at least an hour prior to whatever is happening. And because I had felt so strongly that the CBD was going to be enough based on the two nights prior, I said, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to give this to her if I don't have to. I should have given it to her um, because it just wasn't enough for her. She didn't, she was not doing well. So about 9, 10, my husband um, was, I was out with the cats making sure they were okay. He called me back in and said, hey, she's not doing okay. So I gave her um, a, a, one pill of the doggy Xanax. And we gave it an hour and we gave it a good hour. Let me tell you, I was doing everything I could. I was um, doing all of the things that behaviorally um, are supposed to help dogs understand that, okay, I don't need to be afraid. So what I mean by that is when dogs are scared and afraid and there are noises that they can't get away from, they're, they're, these noises trigger um, am I going to stay here and freeze and freak out or am I going to run? And so if they can't run, if they can't, which, which is why so many dogs bolt out of the house. They find ways to, um, get out the door or ch they try to chew through door moldings, whatever it may be, because they're trying to get away from the noise. So many dogs run away because of the noise, because they're trying to flee from it. Um, but if they can't and they have to hunker down in place, they really tense up. They, you know, generally will like kind of push their neck in, um, get as close to the floor as they can. They want to be as small as they can. And this is very tense on their body, on their joints, on their um, muscles. It's, it's, it's not a comfortable uh, um thing. It's not a comfortable position for them to be in. So 
being like counterintuitive to that is me saying everything's okay and using my happy voice and um when a firework goes off going a boom boom like you know it's 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 exciting um this is so fun we're gonna play now and I would get a toy and I would try to get her to play and of course she didn't want to play um but I you know I gave it my best effort and I, I kept trying and I'm like everything's okay and I'm making myself big and I'm I'm acting you know moving around and and trying to get her to imitate my actions which are again very counterintuitive for the emotional state she's in but if I can get her to to do that then it kind of helps her body relax which is going to help her mind relax it wasn't working for her (laughs) um and yeah, the little bit of desensitization training that we had done so far since January didn't help. Um, and honestly, I should have done more than what I, I had in the past um, six months. But at any rate, that's where we were. So an hour later, I gave her um, another pill because the directions for her size was one to two pills um, is a dose. So I figured after an hour the second pill, you know, I'll give it to her. Well, within about 30 minutes, she stopped panting, but she was still worried. She was still freaked out. She wanted to kind of be in the bathroom, um, kind of huddled around the toilet. That made her feel safe. So I took her Bluetooth speaker in there and I um, tried to speak to her and use my happy tones and, you know, let, let her be where she felt comfortable and tried to support her. She did ultimately, um, within another 20 to 30 minutes, start calming down, um, getting sleepy and knew the medication was kicking in. This obviously was not ideal for us. Um, I am focusing very heavily on desensitization uh, for these noise phobias moving forward and because of that I want you to know that this is the time to start with your dog too and I want to talk about what desensitization is and how to move forward with it. So basically here is the step-by-step process for desensitizing noise phobias with your dog. Now ideally you'd like to start this during the most impressionable uh, age for your puppy which is around 20 weeks. This is where your dog starts setting in. They're they're very impressionable. Is this scary? Is this not scary, right? So if we can use these noises um, at low volumes in the background, play with them while these noises are on, give them rewards and treats while these noises are on, they're going to form positive associations with these noises and be much less likely to be frightened of them as they grow older. Now, that said, even if you're working with a dog who is well past 20 weeks of age, we can still do this. It's just, it's going to take a little bit longer. So, what we want to do is uh, find a sound, whatever that the sound is that your dog is frightened of, whether that is thunderstorms or fireworks, um, school buses, church bells, whatever it may be. We want to play it at a very low volume. And as you play the sound, reward your dog. Um, I like to mix it up and sometimes I will offer a treat, sometimes I will initiate play, sometimes I will have already initiated play, start the music and continue playing. Um, So this is, I say music, the, the noise in the background. And I want it at a very low volume. Now over time, and I'm not even saying the same day, but over days, over weeks, we can slowly increase the volume always making sure that your dog has not reached threshold, meaning that your dog has not reached the point where they are engaging their fear brain, right? They're not saying, oh my God, they're not tensing up. They're not getting scared. We always want to stay under that point where your dog is feeling like they need to either um, be frightened and scrunch down and, and hide or flee. Those are like the two options that your dog has in this scenario, we don't want to engage that in our dog. So we want to keep the volume low enough to not engage it, but continually 
um, very, very slowly and gradually increase the volume over time. Now, if you do, you know, accidentally engage your dog and they do get a little bit frightened, that's okay. We need to realize that we need to go ahead and lower the volume to where your dog is no longer scared. Um, reward once they calm down because that's what we want to do is is reward the calm that your dog the state that of calm that your dog is in while that noise is playing and it's really important to remember that this can take weeks and months and sometimes even longer depending on your dog's level of fear and what they have experienced in the past so be patient and be positive <laughs> so that is desensitization in a nutshell um, is really not that difficult of a concept and it, it just I, I do want to reiterate how important it is not to uh, not to invoke a fear response in your dog so not let them reach or exceed that threshold level where they have become fearful when you're playing the noise we want to always keep the volume um, low enough to not elicit a fear response from our dog because if we try and just start out immediately with a really really high noise and your dog is fearful this actually can make this process a lot worse go on a lot longer make your dog imprint with this fear response that is going to be that much harder to break um, and to help your dog through in the future. So keep it low, even if it's something you start out thinking you can't hear it, understand that our dog's hearing is so much better than ours that they probably can hear it even if you feel like you can't. Be very, very intentional and slow about the amount you are turning up that volume um, at different sessions, different intervals that you're turning up the volume and always, always, always go at your dog's pace. Um, so if your dog isn't ready to turn up the volume yet, then don't do it. So I hope that is helpful. I hope this is uh, something that you are going to be working with your dog on right now and moving forward with whatever it is that elicits a fear response from them because it is so important that we um, as their guardians we are we're responsible for them and and we need to take on that responsibility serious we have to be serious about it so uh, let me know reach out to me on socials uh, if this is helpful if you have any comments or questions about it I would love to hear from you again I do hope you join the patreon family you can join for as little as a dollar a month and yeah um, make sure if you're not already following the podcast that you do so we have some more incredible interviews coming up soon and oh gosh was there something else oh yes if you have not already rated the podcast whatever app you're using spotify apple google um, whatever it may be i do hope you take a moment to rate the podcast because that is the best way for that application apple or spotify or wherever to uh, know that one you like it but also this is something that they should be recommending to other people and that is how you can help get the word out to other pet parents to help them be the best pet parent they can be and make sure their pets are happy and healthy and thriving so with that i will talk to you guys next week give your pets some extra love from me bye guys oh, oh. Ha <laughs> ha